Hello folks, it's Tyler Buckheit once again for Steiner Tractor Parts. Today, we're on a 1968 John Deere 4020. The 4020, as many of you will know, has been argued as one of the best tractors ever built. This tractor has been in my family since 1981. I've spent lots of hours on the seat. Thankfully, it no longer has a Hineker cab on it because I really didn't like that thing. It was noisy and uncomfortable. But we got it taken off and I use it as my loader tractor and essentially it's a daily driver. Now, a big guy like myself, I like to have a good seat. We replaced the seat cushions on this a number of years ago. They're still all right, but they're showing some wear. But the suspension works all right, but it's certainly not the way it ought to be. When I stand up on the tractor, I should be able to lift up on this handle, and spring action will pull the seat back, allowing me to get on and off the operator station quite easily. And then it should work by, as soon as I sit down on the seat, it should hold it in that position. As soon as I sit on the cushion, the seat slides down and then it locks in place. That hasn't worked <laughs> as long as I can remember, even as a little kid. So today, well, thanks to Steiner Tractor Parts, we've got new parts to rebuild our seat. This is really going to apply to just about any new generation tractor and even some beyond into the 30 series. But definitely reference your parts catalogs as well as the Steiner website and or parts catalog from Steiner to check out what all is available. So on this model we've already taken off our rock shaft covers. That's the first thing you've got to do. The rock shaft covers that, that cover on either side of the seat the sheet metal pieces to remove those. Just a few small 3 8 bolts that hold those on. Then we'll remove our hydraulic support in the back and get the seat off, disassemble it and get it on our workbench. So we've got our seat cushions loose and off the base of our suspension. I want to show you a few things down on the seat, so follow me here Alex. Um, so basically you've got several adjustments on your seat. Um, when, you, when you lift this lever, when everything's working right, your coil spring in here takes it all the way to the back. In this position, you can adjust the position of the relation from the seat to their steering wheel. So if you're a shorter person, you would adjust over here. If you're a taller person, you adjust here. And the idea is when it comes back down, this little hook would catch a different spot depending on where you adjust it. In our case, if you're my dad and you're not as tall, and you try to adjust it in the short position, something's always kept it from going any closer to the steering wheel. Uh, for me, it's not a problem, but if you're not as tall, that's an issue. So this adjustment no is no, no longer functional. I can see that our cable isn't even wound on this spool uh, like it should be to spring back. So that's really the issue there. Um, something else I'll show you, there's an adjustment right here. There's a, there's a, would take a 9 16th wrench and you tighten this up. That's your spring tension adjustment. There's an indicator window on the opposite side of the frame. Sorry, I can't get in the view right now, but there's a little indicator in there that says where you would adjust that depending upon the weight of the operator. So for a guy like me, I adjust it almost where I'm maxing out, but, uh, those are your basic adjustments, and then on top of that, then the whole, uh, the whole platform moves up and down with weight to cushion the shock and the load. So what we're going to do here, now we've got the cushions loose, we're going to go ahead and get this on our bench, but before we can do that, we've got to remove uh, the hydraulic hangers on the back. We've already, like I said earlier, we've already removed the rock shaft covers that sit on either side. Um, we'll also have the disconnect wiring if we've got a rear light. Uh, from our tractor. And then basically the whole seat assembly comes off. There's four bolts. Uh, there are two tapered uh, tapered bolts like lug bolts on either side of the frame to remove those with the 15 16 wrench. Pick up the whole assembly and we'll get it on the workbench and we'll take a closer look. Well I should mention I forgot to do this right at the start of the videos. This is my garage, this is my kids toy storage, and this is where I try to work on my antique tractors. So. You can kind of see that from the picture here. It's not a super clean shop. I strive for that, but someday perhaps when I retire. Anyway, so our layout of parts for rebuilding our deluxe float ride seat, our deluxe seat for our 4020, is, is right here. I'll kind of go over some of the items. Um, everything laid out here is part of the, of the seat kit, the JDS3237. That includes things like the coil springs, uh, bushings, pins, springs, other bushings. Uh, various pins, a new cable, 
uh, the cables are often broken, very common thing. Uh, it looks like a stainless steel cable and some shim washers and such. Um, next to that, these are, the, these are new parts uh, specifically for the seat cushions. Um, well, it's very common for these to be missing and or damaged over the years. You know, things got modified, tractors got rolled over, so on and so forth. Um, so nice uh, new stuff is always a, a blessing. Uh, bolt kit for the seat cushions as well to hold everything in place. Um, in addition, we've also, Steiner also has a, available a new adjusting screw. Um, you know, over time, if these haven't been adjusted or moved, uh, your threads get pitted and corroded. Uh, that's a JDS 3230. Uh, that's going to be one we'll definitely put in. In some cases, if your seat is extremely worn, um, the uh, connecting straps or bars, uh, the JDS 3416, uh, they may have worn through the bushings and actually need, uh, need not just bushing replacement, but uh, rather the whole strap and arm. Um, these are also these are new, uh, new for Steiner catalog, JDS 3721. It's the uh, it's the, the bushings, uh, the threaded bushings that actually attach your straps. Um, in addition to that, we've also got the JDS 807, which is the shock assembly with the spring completely assembled. Now Steiner offers both the shock that's inside as well as a complete assembly like this. I can tell you from personal experience, it is well worth the money to buy the whole assembly. This is under a lot of pressure, and to install it, you have to compress the spring around this and turn it 90 degrees to allow this, the eyelet to go down through the keeper. Something that is it's really a dangerous procedure, and you know, unless you have a jig set up to do it properly, um, you're going to need more than just basic tools to do that. So just bear in mind, uh, say, think, always think safety first, especially when you've got spring tension under pressure. So highly recommend just going, if your old shock is, is worn out and, and by 90% 90, 90 of them are better, probably are. Uh, so go ahead and just buy the assembly and uh, push the easy button. So we'll uh, clear this off, we'll get our seat assembly up on our work table and we'll begin disassembly and sec check out and see if we have any new surprises. All right, so we've got our seat frame on our work table. First thing we do, uh, to release the tension on our counterbalance spring. In our case, our spring, has, there's no tension on it because it's long since been dysfunctional. But if yours has tension on it, what you do is you use a flat blade screwdriver and you push in. And I'll show you in just a second why that's important. Um, Alex, if you can show down in there, there's a little tab and there's four, there's, there's four positions this could be in to lock in place. But when you disengage the tab, you're able to unwind your spring and release tension. And once you get it released far enough, you can pull the, the coil out of off of the, the pin. Now in our case, um, we've already disconnected our cable, but I'll show you a little trick to do that. Your cable winds around this, this spool and it comes up in underneath the seat frame, way up in there. Well at first, you know, we're not able to see it in this position, but if we adjust, hold on just a second, we're able to adjust here our, our cable actually attaches to a little hook right in underneath this area so if everything's loose you can probably reach in here with a needle nose you can feel the hook I just can't show it to you in the video it's right underneath here you simply slide it, the cable end the looped end right off of the hook and then you're free now once we're free in this case we can slide our whole assembly off and you have to hold this otherwise it'll want to drop in that lowest position slide it off of our frame to reveal our rollers which uh, kind of look like they're a little bit worn uh, nylon rollers <laughs> we estimate this tractor to have about 20,000 hours and that's not a uh, that's not an exaggeration by any by any point so uh, we'll go ahead and further disassemble in the next step all right so we're back at our seat frame. Uh, something I should note before we get diving into taking the suspension apart, um, our guide rollers, are, they simply just slip on these ends of these pins. There's, there's nothing to hold them on uh, once they're outside of, the, of this rail. So when you take them apart, you gotta watch out because there's little shim washers uh, inside. And we wanna note how many washers are in each location. In this case, we've already determined that each one only has one shim washer. Oh, stuck to the end of the stuck to the end of the pin. 
So uh, each one only has one shim washer. So when we put our new ones back on, we'll put them back in the same fashion. Um, all right, so with that out of the way, moving on to our counter shaft and how to get that apart. So we, to get the counter shaft out and to take all of our internals apart, we've gone ahead and loosened up the snap ring here uh, just to investigate that uh, things are loose enough to come apart because obviously there's a concern about um, corrosion and rust and so forth over the years. So what we're going to do is remove the snap ring using the snap ring pliers right here on the end of the counter shaft. So we've done that. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is take a hammer and tap that out so far. <clears throat> what we'll do is drive that out just far enough can release the spring and this little piece inside. Sometimes you need another hand on a project like this. But if you take your time and just use some patience. Okay. Just about to the point. We can get our little button and our spring out. That's what we pushed on with the screwdriver earlier, and it uh, is a detent, and it releases into these little end slots. So as it's pushed in, it disengages these, and you can turn it with a screwdriver and release the tension on your leaf spring. So what we'll do, very carefully, because this is a bit of a project, we're going to drive, we'll, we'll gently drive this shaft out of both pieces. The coil spring simply slides on the slot, and once the shaft is out of this uh, housing, the coil spring will just simply slide off. This collar is going to take a little more persuasion. Uh, this is what your cable rolls on as a guide. And then we'll also be taking our washer and then our snap ring uh, with it as well. So further disassembly of our seat frame, our suspension system is uh, shown to find even some more worn parts. Um, our links and bushings, almost all the bushings were egg-shaped and worn through. Um, we're going to be replacing both of these. Um, you see the, the special nuts that go inside the bushings are equally as worn. I don't know if you can see that close up. Additionally, um, some of, a lot of these, the washers that uh, go inside the suspension pieces, uh, additional little bushings, all heavily worn. Um, and then once you get you know, all the bolts and nuts loose from these frame pieces, you know, essentially our shock absorber just sort of sits in place. Um, your shock absorber, the upper end sits in here like so, it just sits in place. Um, these side plates hold everything together and this frame comes right off of the shock absorber are these slotted plates. You just sort of adjust, they're slotted like so, and you just slide them out of the pins, they come loose. Um, it would also appear, in our case, that our shock absorber, which we replaced a few years ago, um, has an oily presence, residue, probably may have already failed, um, and our bushings certainly are, are worse for wear. So we'll be uh, upgrading and replacing all of that. Uh, obviously going to clean everything up. Uh, when we assemble, we want everything clean, clean and free of uh, any oily or dirt residue. Uh, so now's the time to get in there and clean it because uh, once you get it assembled, there's no way to get a pressure washer onto it. So um, I guess I should also mention our adjuster bolt. Uh, to remove it, you simply have to knock this roll pin out and then thread it out of this the holder. Um, you're not going to be able to chase these threads with a regular tap because this is, these are left-handed threads. So bear that in mind. Um, we'll go ahead and replace ours. Obviously, it just looks like it's really dirty uh, in our case. So I'll get to the parts washer, start cleaning, and then we will come back and talk about reassembly. Okay, so we did some further analysis of some of our parts looking for worn areas. Um, obviously, the pin for the, uh, for the shock absorber uh, comes in the basic kit. Um, our old pin was where the bushings were actually worn through, it wore onto the pin. Uh, pretty common type setup. Um, also found 
You're, this is very common that the E-clips or snap rings that, that hold the washers up against the shock absorber um, to keep your pin in place and everything where it needs to be, um, they just over time just get brittle. As soon as you start, start to remove uh, two of the clips out of the four broke uh, and a third one was not usable anymore. Um, so clip, uh, a new E-clip is definitely what you need. Hopefully these will be available soon within the basic kit. But uh, as of right now, um, I would recommend getting new Eclipse, just getting four new Eclipse right out the gate. Um, additionally, we found, and I think it was this bushing here, um, had been in the, uh, this, this housing or frame like so, and it wore through into the housing. So there's a couple ways to repair that. You can obviously weld this up and mill it back down. Uh, I don't have capability to do that. I could re-drill it, but since you know three quarters or a little bit more, give or take, of the of the bore uh, was untouched, I'm simply going to uh, put my bushing in, put a plug in, and tape the other side. I'm going to use epoxy, um, fill that in, and just hold the bushing in place. Um, nothing that's a super critical fit. This should do the trick, um, but you could go either way depending on your preference. So we'll do this. Let it set up overnight. And, uh, and continue our assembly. So here we are assembling our pins and bushings in our shock absorber spring assembly. Um, this isn't something you can just slap together and, uh, and get, it, get it without any special tools. Um, the, one of the easiest ways to assemble this, we actually made a uh, jig, if you will, out of one inch pipe. <clears throat> it needs to be about a 15 16 opening to get your E-clip in. But what you do you can do this in a vise, we're using a hydraulic press, um, is compress these bushings down with the washers on either side of the bushing far enough such that you can access the <coughs> groove for the E-clip to go in. And <coughs> now that we've done that, uh, I can simply let the pressure off. And uh, we've got one end assembled anyway. So we will turn around and do the next end. As you can see, that's how everything sandwiches together. We did pre-lube these with uh, with a lanolin uh, non-petroleum uh, base lubricant. Uh, big kicker is just around rubber like that you don't want to use anything petroleum based. It could degrade the rubber over time. So that's uh, this is the other end and we'll go ahead and uh, and put that together. I also should note the short pin goes in the top, the long pin goes in the bottom as far as how it uh, is oriented in the seat assembly. So, you know, just remember that the shaft goes up. It may not make a whole lot of difference, but that's uh, the way John Deere suggested it, and that's the way our seat had been assembled. All right, so we're on the assembly side of our seat frame, suspension frame, and our shock absorber frame. And I've got to say, this is kind of one of those parts where you wish you had four hands. Um, but that being said, we've installed new links on the side. Our shock absorber's in here. Now, if if I go to moving, this all kind of wants to fall apart, so I'm holding it like so. Uh, make sure that, you know, when you set it in here, this window on the side for your seat adjustment or your weight adjustment and this little indicator arm, or, because, you know, it's got to be flipped to this side. It could be flipped the other way, and then you realize, oh, snap, we've got to take it back apart. So trying to avoid that. Um, so what we do is we simply put our seat frame up here, those little... Uh, these, these hold the ends of the, of the upper shock pin. So I'm going to set this down in here, like so. And for the sake of uh, just letting things rest, once again, you need four hands. Never a bad idea to have a little extra help. I'm just letting this rest right here for the moment. Um, I'm talking about our, our seat supports. This is actually what holds the whole, the whole seat on your tractor. And then the links on the side, you'll see the links already have the bushings uh, installed if you, if you went that route. Otherwise, you would just have new bushings in the kit to install on your old links. Um, the shoulder nut is uh, what goes inside the bushing. These have to be torqued to 40 foot-pounds. It's really important that you get that torque setting right. Um, you don't want to over-tighten, but if you under-tighten, uh, your bushings are you know essentially... They could come loose and fall apart, or you're, you're, you, know, you don't want that happening when you're riding down the uh, parade route on your tractor or out in the pasture feeding hay bales. So uh, we've done that. These are left and right, respectively. And you kind of got to put your head together and think, okay, how does this go together, just to make sure. 
um, it's probably a, a wise uh, move to, to make sure you've got a parts diagram at hand at all times for this project. Uh, it's very easy to get things turned around and mixed up. may not be a bad idea if you'd like to mark left and right uh, as long as you can think about uh, you know, flipping seat upside down and how it is orient oriented on your tractor for left and right. Maybe a, a helpful for assembly later. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is lower this frame, this down inside of the uh, suspension frame. I've got a washer that goes between here and this little bushing here. There's a uh, just a flat steel kind of a spacer, but that's more or less a bushing inside of a bushing. The washer goes in here like so uh, to retain it. Okay, we're installing our suspension support links into our suspension frame. We've already done this side. <clears throat> uh, it's important to note um, anytime these nut bearings are used uh, you always want to torque to 40 foot-pounds. In this case there's four of those so we just want to make sure that we get them torqued to the proper setting. So I'm going to go ahead <clears throat> like so, I'm putting our nut bearing in. bolt in, put our washer there, okay, we've got that snug, now I'm going to torque it. I apologize, my, uh, my inch pound torque wrench is uh, not in the shop right now, so I'm using my uh, foot-pound torque wrench, my half-inch drive, 40 foot-pounds. Okay, we've got that in. Then we'll be installing our our inner our bearing. It's called a bearing. And notice I'm not lubricating these uh, these points, primarily because um, you know anytime you lubricate like that, you're going to be attracting. Uh, dirt and dust potentially. So we'll install our washers. In this case we put washers on both the inside and the outside. Okay. Snug that up. Now our suspension frame reassembled. So we're ready to work on the upper part for our adjusting. Uh, maybe take a good look about how it's set up. It's really a pretty simple setup. It's just thinking it through um, utilizing a service manual and or a parts diagram just for identifying parts. So we've got our counter shaft, uh, counterbalance shaft assembled. Uh, slid in with our uh, with our uh, counterbalance guide for the cable. Uh, we've got our snap ring set in position, and there's just enough room in here. Now it's very important here to make sure the spring is oriented properly. Think about the spring, which way it wants to pull. In this case, the hooks on this end, the spring is going to want to rotate like this, and when that happens, it's going to wind up our cable in this guide, this little groove. So. We install it such that it accomplishes that. And there's just enough clearance in here to do this with the snap ring installed. And they don't give you a lot of extra room to work, but they give you just enough. Okay. It's hooked just like so. We'll continue sliding everything together. This arm, we've got to make sure this notch stays engaged. Okay, get it about to here, and then we have a washer that goes on there. Oops. <laughs> that happens when you need three three hands and little hands. My kids would would be happy if I asked them to help with this part of the project, but they get their fingers dirty. We have to compress this spring between the housing and that washer, and then once we have it in place, slide the shaft on through. 
pretty tight squeeze and you might find that a screwdriver will help you in the process. It's kind of like trying to play with a slinky. There we go. Once we get it into place, we'll slide our shaft on over. You sort of have to pull the spring back in the process. So once we're here, okay, don't forget we've got a snap ring groove to contend with. It wants to mm -hmm. hang up in there. Then stick this little piece in, tab this end out. We'll slide it in. We may have to turn the shaft until it lines up with the holes in here and we can put it in. Then we will assemble with our snap ring. Oops. <laughs> it's the real world here. One thing about this project, make sure you have a good dose of patience prior to attempting the project. Use a little tap on our hammer. Now everything's in place. And we can check everything is working as it should. Okay. Now we're ready to get our track frame and roller set up. All right, so we've gotten our counterbalance shaft fully assembled now. And um, I should note that we uh, the little locking tab that goes in here, you get the shaft through, spring in, in here in place, push the shaft all the way through. You can just hold it with your hand or tap it lightly with like a, uh, a hammer. And then put your tab in the slot, press it down, and then using a, the snap ring, set the snap ring on the groove so it locks it, keeps everything inside. You know it's right when you can push your screwdriver in and then adjust, um, you know, and lock into place. And don't worry about winding this. That's something we'll do when the seat's all on the track. Um, so for the next step, we will be putting the rollers in place. But what we're going to do, we're going to use the feeler gauge method uh, to install our rollers. So we'll start with the shims that are ten thousandths, one in each roller, like so and put on, assemble our track and then use a feeler gauge. We want between five and thirty thousandths side play total um, on the top and bottom. So we'll be using a feeler gauge to do that in just a bit and decide which shims we need. All right, so we've assembled our nylon rollers with shims. Uh, we've had to play with it a few times, adding some and then taking some back. Uh, we want to make sure before we get a feeler gauge involved, just want to make sure that there's no binding through the full range of motion in your seat. If there's any restriction, um, the whole spring suspension, you don't want any extra friction uh, holding it up from doing its job. So where we use our feeler gauge, and we've established through trial and error, approximately 20 thousandths play. Um, we, uh, we can check on the front and go all the way in the extreme up position. These little slots right here. John Deere conveniently put those on the side. Yeah, I guess this one's a little less than 20 thousandths, but you get the idea. Uh, sliding and checking it at the front, it should be between 5 and 30 thousandths, and that is definitely in the realm. And then on the back, slide it down in the front back position. And we can go right here between the end of the roller and the end of the track frame. And we've got just a hair more than 20 thousandths. It's really right where we want to be. So uh, we've got that part buttoned up. <clears throat> the next thing we'll want to do is uh, hook up our cable. In just a bit, we'll do that. So we've got our track frame all assembled. We've got our cable hooked up. And it's not too hard to do. You just you run it straight up so that it doesn't interfere with anything. There's a little hook right in underneath here uh, that we hang our cable on to. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but there's a little hook in there. You just slip it on. And we've already tensioned ours, so obviously the cable's not the cable is uh, taut. But what we do, you've got to uh, when you start to tension this, the cable has to be wrapped around this guide. 
otherwise it's not going to work properly. So as you would start your, you would start down at the bottom to tension it, all the way at the bottom, and you simply push your screwdriver in, and you, it's best to have a helper here, you push it in and then you, you, you tension it, uh, you'll only be able to turn it so much with a screwdriver before it just gets to be too much effort. Um, and even even using a bigger screwdriver because it wants to spread the end of the shaft. Remember the shaft is cut all the way through in half. So what you do is re release the latch and tighten this at the same time and you sort of let the the seat frame go up and you and you tighten this at the same time and almost let it like wind up. When you get all the way to the top you push it in, you keep it in and maybe wind it one or two more uh, notches. Uh, basically what we're after is we set it in the bottom position and we release it we want it to take our seat all the way to the top. And if there's not su sufficient spring tension we just got to wind it a little bit tighter. The big trick is ensuring that the cable stays taut on the guide because if, if that gets loose and, and loses tension uh, your cable will come undone and wrap around things and do things it shouldn't do. Uh, you'll be fishing the cable out because it ran off the track and you're trying to pinch it. It's pinched somewhere. So, uh, very important to note that. So in this case, um, you know, we've got it set up such that when it's in our bottom position, when we release it, it comes all the way up. This is the way the seat was designed to work. I realize I don't, we don't have our cushion on, it's not in our tractor yet, but we know it operates, uh, it adjusts like it's supposed to, and it functions so far. So we'll go ahead and install it back on our tractor and uh, install our seat cushion and just make sure everything's adjusted properly. So as you can see, we've installed our seat cushions, installed our rock shaft covers back on our 4020. Um, just a little a tip, I guess, in terms of your seat cushions. We installed new brackets with the seat cushions. Um, and we also use the bolt kit that Steiner supplies. Everything's to cut to length and you know, it's all the proper hardware. Um, one thing to note, when you, when you go to start these, the bolts, um, just hand tighten everything or just, you know, start the threads, leave it all loose. Um, everything's form fitting. So, you know, depending on your seat frame and so on, just leave it loose, get everything started. And then once you have all the bolts in place, you can tighten them. Uh, you want to make sure they're good, snug and secure. There are a couple different sets of holes, uh, like in the back, in the, in the armrest. Uh, as well as the, the seat bottom, so you'll have to determine, you know, it's best really to look at your old ones to see where they were mounted up uh, and sort of use that as a guide, but if not, you'll just have to figure out, um, you know, what fits your tractor best. So, um, we've, we've adjusted our seat, takes a half inch wrench or 9 16 um, and you, we tighten this, uh, we tighten or loosen depending upon the weight. Uh, for me, I'm a big guy. I set it almost to the maximum setting. So um, the seat is in the up position because I pulled my lever and the seat went back. So this is how it should work. I get on the tractor. I've got it set for above medium position on, on height. This is our adjustment for, this is high for taller folks. This is short for people that want it closer up. I like it about the middle up to the high side. So I sit on the seat, takes me right to where I want to be. Steering wheel's right where I want, foot pedals are just right, but if I want to readjust, simply lift this up and it goes all the way to the top. So this is how it's supposed to work. You lift over and your seat returns up. So whether you're standing up on the platform, getting on and off, that's how they're supposed to work. It's the first time in my lifetime that this seat has worked properly on our 4020, so that's going to be a pleasure to use. and. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So thanks for hanging in there with us. Uh, check out Steiner Tractor Part or SteinerTractor.com for uh, all sorts of parts for your tractor. And uh, best of luck to you.